later, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. I'm here with Scott Severance from the Slick Six Guns Network, and he brought a Spencer rifle. Look at that. Very nice. On March 6, 1860, a patent was granted to Christopher M. Spencer for his breech-loading repeating rifle design. Windage and elevation, Mrs. Langdon. Windage and elevation. A factory was opened in Boston, and the military contracts started coming in. Six years later, over 64,000 rifles were delivered to the government. You know what? Let's get some more info from Scott. So why was the Spencer so popular during and after the Civil War? Well, the Spencer was popular for several reasons. First off, it was relatively rapid fire for the time. It also had a large capacity. The round itself that it fired was very powerful comparative to the Springfield musket of the time. And also, since it, it was a new development, the uh, round that it fired was in a self-contained metallic cartridge. The action was extremely strong, so a lot of frontline troops actually reported on them, specifically very famous people like Custer talked about it. Even the president got his hands on one. Also, uh, Spencer himself had a lot of connections with firearms manufacturers during the day. He also was able to deliver a lot of the arms that were requested very fast compared to a lot of other manufacturers. So yeah, Scott's got a Spencer. He's going to show us a little bit Spencer about Spencer rifle, huh? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. you got that here today? Yeah, I do. Did you bring some ammo for it? I sure did, but it, there are a couple dummy rounds. Dummy rounds? You better watch out. Yeah, you better run. <laughs> oh, you want me to go get it? Yeah, yeah, go oh, get it. Yeah. All right, Silver I'll go get it. Third. Awesome, oh, Spencer rifle. Dummy rounds, I mean, come on. At least he didn't bring idiot rounds with that. <sighs> idiot rounds, real nice, Jerry. Hey, Scott. Guys. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. The, uh, the rifle's gone? The rifle's gone. I left it right over there. It's gone. Scott, it's probably Bill the ghost. Don't worry about it's it. We'll get it back. Yeah. We'll get it back. Don't worry about it. It's all right. It's you okay. don't understand that. Rifle was expensive. I know. I know. Really I expensive. It's really expensive. I get it. No, get it, it cost me. You don't understand what it cost me. It cost me, it cost me children. What? Huh? Well, um, wow, well, that was expensive. Yeah, that's serious. Hey, you know what? I got a plan. Let's go. All right. It's fine. Old man took it with a wise old man, washed his face in a frying pan, combed his hair and flame, and he looked back to the baby and he yelled, Get out of the way, old man Tucker. There it is. I see it. Let's just go get it. No, hang on now. Bill's always around. So stick to the plan. I'll tell you what, I hope we find a dispenser real soon. Well, it didn't grow legs. Or... Hey, fellas, fellas, I need your help. Jack Daniels truck just drove a turn down there. There's booze everywhere, right, and there's no cops. So, how many rounds can it hold, and how do you load it? Well, uh, it can take seven rounds in the tubular magazine. That's a buttload of ammunition, let me tell you. Okay? And it can also take one in the chamber. So, for a total of eight, seven plus one. Both cartridges that it fired were rimfire. But because metallic cases were such a new development of the time, you had several different diameters of the casing. But the original Spencer used during the Civil War came out in what they call a 5656 room fire cartridge. And during the Old West period, in the model 1865 specifically, you had the 5650 room fire cartridge. But what kind of action did it see in the Old West? Well, out west by the cavalry, as I said, it was a major cavalry arm, okay. and it was used in most of the Indian War engagements, hmm. such as Red Cloud's War, as well as the Battle of Washita. Oh, okay. So the Springfield was another military arm. Was it as accurate as the Springfield? Well, it's a lot like diapers, Santee. It depends. <laughs> What I mean specifically with that is that the Springfield was a larger uh, powder charge, okay. so it could reach out to further distances. So out to certain distances, the Springfield was far more accurate. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and run this a couple of times just so that I can show you the effectiveness of the action. If you were to have any sort of reproduction uh, or any type of firearm like this, you have to take into consideration the ammo you're using. It can be finicky. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. So you still have that Spencer rifle, huh? Yeah. 
And I can still knock you out of a bird flying, too. By 1869, the Spencer Company closed its doors, but there were so many in use that the ammunition continued to be manufactured well into the 20th century. Well, Scott, thanks for being on the uh, Arizona Ghost Riders channel. Really appreciate it. Thanks for showing us your really cool Spencer rifle. That's neat. Got her back, too. Yeah, yeah cool. finally. See, gee, look, dummy round. It's got your name on it. What? You might want to take off. Come on. <laughs> Hey folks, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Ouch! I found the well, I have to say, it's a lot like diaper Santee. It depends. Mainly it depends on the distance. Okay. I knew I forgot something today. <laughs> Reaching out to further distances is also why I wear diapers, so yeah. I didn't, we'll, we'll cut that part I didn't out. need to know that. <laughs> All right.